Good morning. To God be the glory. Our scripture this morning for the next two principles is found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you that you chose us to fulfill your purpose here on earth. We thank you, dear God, it is a service to your people that you continue to pour into us so that we might pour into others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Abaragani, what's the good news? The good news is Kwanzaa, a celebration of us. While it's not a religious holiday, for sure it's a spiritual one, as it celebrates the very best of who we are, our dance, our rhythms, our history, our culture, and our God. The God who always had a plan to prosper us and not to harm us, a plan to give us hope and a future. The God who so perfectly set everything in motion, has delivered and restored us time and time again from those who would try to convince us that we were less than important. So believers of the faith, there can be no separation between the purpose we set for ourselves and the divine purpose God ordained for our lives from the beginning of time. All of the Kwanzaa principles hang on what was already there before the foundation of the world, brought forth by the omnipotent creator of the heavens and the earth. Nevertheless, in following the thread of the Kwanzaa principles already presented, we shine a spotlight this morning on Nia, the sixth principle of purpose, where we make as a collective vocation the building and developing of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. And Kaumba, the seventh principle of creativity, always striving to do all that we can to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than it was when we first inherited it. These two principles have worked in concert with each other for generations to shape our existence and the contributions we've made in our community and yes, in our world. They demonstrate our persistence and, and they show the resilience of an African people. From the bowels of slavery, our Exodus experience has always been wrapped in red, black, and green. No surprise there. We know what purpose is and we know how to apply it. And we know what creativity is also. For this country we call home was built on the backs of our ancestors who left a legacy of strength and perseverance. God told them in the spirit before many of them even knew how to read a sentence that they were free and they had the audacity to believe it. Though their bodies were battered, bruised, and broken, they had the intestinal fortitude to press on through the storm, through the rain, in sickness and in pain. They learned how to depend on God. Frederick Douglass believed this. Harriet Tubman believed it also, known as the Black Moses. While being tracked down like a dog, Mrs. Tudman told her oppressor she would either be free or dead. Oh, what's the song that we sing, Abyssinian, when we come together? Oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. Before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave. And what? Go home to my Lord and be free. God birthed the gift of courage inside of Harriet Tudman so that her purpose would be fulfilled. And so we celebrate her spirit 
and the spirit of many others during this time of Kwanzaa. We embrace all of our victories through the freedom of expression and culture, leadership, and our collective power. The kind of power demonstrated in 1941 when the Tuskegee Army Flying School accepted African-American military aviators for the very first time. They called it the Tuskegee Experiment because they didn't have confidence in our ability to perform at such a high level. Oh, but the omnipotence of God stepped in to teach them a lesson about who he is, who we are, and a little something about preordained purpose and his relationship with those who dare to walk in it. The discipline and skills shown by the African-American aviators was so profoundly effective that for over 200 combat missions, the enemy fighter planes were afraid to fly too close to the U.S. bombers. And as a result, not one aircraft was lost while being escorted by the men in the red tail Mustangs. God destroyed the myth of incompetence of African-American pilots. And this would only be a snapshot of things to come and the level of contributions we would make in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Just imagine with me for a moment what these pilots went through to be recognized for just their humanity and respected for their excellence and their skill. Ah, and God didn't stop there. Around the same time, there was another type of experiment going on that would further blow the mind of the dominant culture. But this time, instead of men, God ordained purpose and creativity in three black women, black female scientists hired by NASA to function as human computers. They worked behind the scenes in one of the biggest advances in aeronautics. Against all odds, these women used their personal power to reveal the same dignity and strength as the Tuskegee military aviators. Oh, how the dominant culture would have loved for them to remain hidden figures, but God had a different plan. God, the God that we serve, made sure their names would never be forgotten. Katherine Johnson, mathematician. Mary Jackson, an aerospace engineer. And Dorothy Johnson Vaughn flexed their creative muscle in 1943, making significant contributions to the U.S. space program in its early years. As a computer programmer, Mrs. Vaughn was the first black female computer supervisor that NASA ever had. All the insults and the emotional stress of being black and female in a predominantly white male environment didn't stop their lights from shining brightly because they were on a mission to pave the way for us to be inspired and creative, to live out our dreams of becoming whatever we choose to become. These sheroes in NASA never let their mental capacity, creativity, and faith fade. Instead, they persevered in a world that would never accept their courage and their brilliance. That's when Jesus stepped in, our God, our Savior, our Holy Spirit, to make sure his purpose would be revealed through them. He planted seeds in the hearts and minds of those in charge, letting them know in no uncertain terms that if they wanted to be successful in their space missions, what they had hidden in the back room in the dark had to be brought to the front and put in the light. In every industry, our people have excelled. They have made their mark and have continued to be victorious. It's purpose and creativity fused together that creates the opportunity to propel us forward. 
no matter what they've said about us, and no matter what they've tried to do to us, we still rise. O oh God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path, we pray. Time and again, God used the lives of African people to make fools out of those who desire to keep us bound. Though through his mysterious movement over the course of our history, we more than any other culture continue to break down barriers and glass ceilings, he gave us a glimpse of what happens when purpose and creativity take center stage during the most difficult and complex times of life's journey. And now, the misery of our history has become our ministry to a world that's filled with bigotry and hatred and pride. When we work together, we show the world how to continue to stand firm in the face of adversity. We must continue to execute our purpose by first loving who we are as a people and working together in harmony. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it this way, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Well, challenge and controversy are where we live and where we stand today. We need to stop looking to a people that will never accept us, no one's going to give us anything. Dr. King was right when he said, we know through painful experiences that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. I say it's time. I'll say it again, it's time to make our demands with faith that God will continue to intercede on our behalf. Even if it's not in our lifetime, so shall it be in the lifetime of our children. For he who has begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, who already, by the way, did his part. He did it on the cross of Calvary. He prepared us for such a time as this. We must now carry the torch, press on, walk in purpose, and think critically and creatively until victory is won for all black and brown people of the earth. And we don't have to wait for Kwanzaa to come around once a year. Every day should be our Kwanzaa. We've got to be intentional about telling our story over and over and over again to our children, whether they want to hear it or not. Telling our story through our own lens or someone else will tell our story and it will not be our truth. Let us hold on to the same compassion and courage our ancestors had in order to make a difference in a fractured world. Then and only then can we as a people be restored to our traditional greatness. Then and only then can our communities prosper and be as beneficial and beautiful as they were when we first inherited them. Nia, Kaumba are part of the legacy we want to leave our children so that they might enjoy it as we have. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.